Joining us now is OG Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, OG. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Yeah, just take charge. As always. <laughs> Good morning, Tundu. Good morning, Lovely Georgie. Victoria. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Yeah. Good morning, Rufai. You, you know she's in charge. Yeah. As always. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. How are morning. you? Good morning, Archie. How are you? I'm Very doing well. well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump has once again teased the idea of running for president in 2024. He says he's considering it beyond seriously, as he is more popular now than he was during his four years in office. And Lieutenant William Kelly, a Virginia police officer, has been fired for donating $25 to Kenosha shooter Kylie Rittenhouse's legal fund with a note saying, you've done nothing wrong. In Amsterdam, Dutch authorities have launched an investigation into the identity of a man discovered in the landing gear of an airplane that arrived from Lagos, Nigeria. In South Africa, musician Yvonne Shaka Shaka has debunked news of her death after an unknown social media user posted her obituary on the internet and started a GoFundMe page for her funeral. In Nigeria, 27-year-old ex-banker Deborah Ojengbede raised over $1 million for her tech startup Appen, which is the first government-backed non-fungible token initiative. And police officer Sunday Erabo, who was assaulted by a motorist and remained calm in the face of provocation, has been rewarded with 1 million naira. The money was raised by 158 Nigerians to encourage responsible policing. And photos of malnourished lions at zoos located at the Obafemi Awolowo University and the University of Ibadan has sparked outrage on social media. Under sports, the pulling out of six English clubs from the now ill-fated European Super League has renewed resignation calls on Twitter by Arsenal fans who desperately wants the club owner Stan Kroenke out and Nigerian billionaire Aliko Dangote to take over the club. Finally, under entertainment, American fashion designer Michael Kors lights up Broadway in a triumphant 40th anniversary runway show. The native New Yorker staged his fall 2021 collection with a multi-generational cast of supermodels who have walked in his shows over the years, including Bella Hadid, Shalom Halo, Leah Kebede, Karen Nelson, Alec Weck, and Naomi Campbell. Hey! Well, let's begin what's trending in Nigeria. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has accused the Nigerian elite of fanning the embers of disintegration in the country. According to the minister, the elite, who are dual citizens, are the ones preaching tribal hatred and will be the first to escape from the country at a crack of trouble. The minister, while speaking at a forum organized by the news agency of Nigeria, warned that the Nigerian elite will bear the greater consequence if Nigeria breaks up, because if that were to happen, some elites who have attained professoral status may be left with no option than to work at bakeries in neighboring Togo just to survive. Tundu, I'm going to begin with you. I mean, he is the Minister of Foreign Information, and I'm sure that he has the statistics. Like I was saying to you earlier, you are an elite. I'm are not. you? <laughs> I know that a lot of people might not even consider a Sunday Igbo ho an elite, but I mean, I guess he has the information. But other people are also saying at this point in our economy, people with master's degree are, you know, having to apply for menial jobs, are working in, you know, <laughs> menial occupations at this point in our uh, economy. But I mean, I'm glad that the Minister for Information is speaking up and we should always be against people that are fanning the embers of disintegration in our country. I agree with you, yes. OG. I think his comments are perfectly in order, and it's a good reminder. He did say that we have seen this in Nigeria before, when we've played host to other countries' refugees, when everything falls apart in their country. And you've been seeing, I'm sure, since the um, Syrian um, civil war broke out, you have all these documentaries of people telling you how back in Syria they lived in a mansion, and now they're stuck in some hovel somewhere. 
So what he's saying is actually true, that this is our country. If we destroy it, which I pray we never do, Correct. wherever we do find to run to, it's not going to be on the same terms. Our lives will be vastly diminished. So we should be responsible about what we put out there. And elites like you have tried <laughs> you to have be to tell us. responsible and have tried to really <laughs> share that message of stop rattling sabers in this country because this is our home, it's our Nigeria. And he makes a good point. I was, I was with a group of friends one day and one of them was ranting about secession and Nigeria can burn and we all looked at each other and burst out laughing because at the first sign of any trouble he's Where? going to he's grab out. his red passport and he's going to be out so you cannot you have to be careful in your personal life in your marriage with the affairs of your nation to take advice from people who have nothing to lose exactly if it does not work they don't pay a price you will pay a price so that's I think, very good advice from the minister dr vati your take well, I mean, uh, the Minister of Information, Alaji Lai Mohammed, made these statements at the News Agency of Nigeria Forum, and there's been a lot coming out of his uh, contributions at that forum. Well, he's uh, doing his job, you know, asking that Nigeria should be united. Everybody in government, every, uh, you know, spokesperson for government continue to, will continue to insist on unity. Some statesmen also insist on the unity of Nigeria. For what reason? Because no country can survive a civil war twice. The consequences will be really dire, very serious. So he's saying that, uh, you know, the uh, elites uh, are the ones causing the problem and that they will be the ones to suffer. They may end up in bakeries in Togo. I didn't know that Allah Jilai Mohammed is also a prophet. But, uh, you know, in that regard, he was acting as a prophet. He can see what will happen <laughs> and the destination of the elites. But what all of us should uh, take into account is the fact that if there is war, if there is crisis in this country, all of us will be affected. As we have seen with banditry, as we have seen with terrorism, the, the, when there is violence, when there is disruption, there is no difference. You know, whether you are the elite or you are the uh, ordinary man, all of us will suffer. And that is why it is our, in our interest, you know, to continue to preach unity. But he talked about the elites uh, fanning the embers of disintegration. Well, I mean, that's like scapegoating. The truth of the matter is that many Nigerians, whether they are in the upper class or the middle class or the lower class, do not think that Nigeria is working for different reasons. The major catalyst for this new rhetoric of uh, secession of, is the failure to ensure justice, the failure to ensure good governance, the failure to uh, ensure that you know, uh, all those principles, directive principles in Chapter 2 of the Constitution are observed you know, and uh, uh, provided. The, the catalyst is 33.3% uh, unemployment. Many young Nigerians who fall into that at 33.3%, they are not happy. That's why they are protesting. The, 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 the catalyst is 20% food inflation. The catalyst is 18.17% uh, headline inflation. Yes. These are the issues. Correct. And, you know, apart from scapegoating and blaming some people and making prophetic uh, declarations uh, about uh, some people that will go to bakeries in Togo or bricklaying sites in uh, Ghana, I think that all of us should focus on how to save Nigeria, how to rescue Nigeria, as Mr. Femi Falano SEN put it this morning. Once there's a consensus there and there is respect for the rule of law, respect for public opinion as an important ingredient of the democratic process, we'll begin to make progress instead of blaming each other. Correct. Rufa, your take on the story. I mean, I don't like it when people that are supposed to call Nigerians together and tell them to come together are talking like this. Uh, are you gagging us? Uh, they will walk us, what is it called, in bakeries in Togo. Are you one of the elites? Are you one no, of the elites? That's what he just said. He clearly, clearly is, is an elite. elite. Ah. <laughs> they are telling us uh, we walk in bakeries in Togo and everything. You see, that's not the way the minister should be talking. The minister now should be saying, I know things are bad, but how can we come together and fix it? Because there are agitations everywhere. Why I said, are you gagging us? As of 2012, Vanguard newspaper reported a story. Let me read it out for you. So before the minister says, oh, we go and work in Berkeley, Togo, no big deal. Six PhD and 704 master's degree holders among applicants for driver jobs at Dangote. Driver. 5th November 2012, go and check it. Vanguard reported that story. So if the country is working, 
would six PhD holders go and apply to get a job as a truck driver? These are the things we are saying. The narrative should not be about gagging people. It should be about how can we make the country work? How can we harness the energy of the great people of Nigeria to make the country work? That's why I, I, I get somehow when people say these things. Right. You're saying you want PhD, uh, professor want to go and do bakery in Togo. A uh, PhD does not work in a bakery in Nigeria That's already. That's the point right now. Correct. Did you see it here? As of 2012, when dollar was still 150 oh, to the Naira, not 475 that it is today, oh, six PhD holders apply for driver job. So did they get their PhD to go and be drivers? Right. Let's fix corruption and insecurity and make the country work. And know that the people that are talking are not just talking. It's because things are not working. Well said, Rufai. We'll take another story in Kaduna State, where unspecified amount of students are still missing after gunmen attacked the first private university in the state on Tuesday night. According to eyewitness reports, the gunmen stormed the university and started shooting sporadically before taking away some of the students. The university, which is located along the Kaduna Abuja Highway in Chinkun local government area of the state, holds a population of about 40 students but lacks adequate security, according to reports. In January this year, 300 female soldiers were deployed to the general area as a result of the incessant kidnappings in the state. Rufai, I believe that we, you know, we had touched on this story earlier today, but I wanted to just, you know, talk about the fact that about 730 students have been abducted since 2020. This is such a huge problem in Nigeria at this point. I am so heartbroken because even as we speak, those um, students that were kidnapped in the same state are still missing at this point. I want to just take our time to speak to the parents. Because you see, the parents of Greenfield University in Kaduna, I want to tell them to have hope. But it's very funny and stupid when I say that. You know why? Hope is a meal that is good for breakfast, but is it good for supper? If there's no food in the house, and they say, okay, eat hope for breakfast, when is dinner time? The person will ask you, what of the hope you promise that something good will come for supper, even if I don't eat breakfast? So it's a good meal for breakfast, but it's not good for supper. We can't keep saying, oh, we hope they will come back. It will get to a stage in the middle of the night when the mothers will cry out and say they want to see their child. What are we going to tell them at that point in time? But at the same time, I'll still preach hope because it looks like a hopeless situation. Please, let's be hopeful that things will get better. Yes. But I don't want a country where I'm coming to preach hope every morning. I want a country that sees the results of the hope we talked about yesterday. This is another one. Right. Tomorrow again in our newspaper, you will see another story. No, I hope not. We're hoping not. Oji, do, I, wanted to I hope with you yeah. that's not the case. Yes. But let's come on what's trending tomorrow. It is really sad. sad. Really sad. I wanted to talk about that security situation, though, in Kaduna State. Why Kaduna State? Why is this happening at this point? Well, it's happening mm -hmm. everywhere. Yes, but Nobody people are also that. saying the fact that, you know, maybe the, the governor is provoking the bandits. People I call them Boko Haram, you know, but I don't know. People are saying yeah. that that's one of the reasons, and I wanted to ask you I that. I don't agree with that. Yeah. You know, I was saying it earlier. Whether your governor talks tough, like a Rufai does, yes. or whether your governor takes... Um, um, photos with AK-47 wielding bandits like right. Masari does, that nobody is immune. Nobody is exempt from the horrors of living in Nigeria today. Same as what we were saying yesterday with the Kui. Oh, we've got to go on a break, yes. apparently. Right. We'll continue. Okay. Well, we're going to go on a short break now. And when we come back, what's trending on the morning show will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show. We're still on What's Trending. Before we went on a break, Tundu, you were making your point about the governor of Kaduna State. I honestly wish there was a formula. There is no formula. Whether your governor refuses to negotiate, whether your governor kowtows, nobody is safe in Nigeria. It would be easy if we could say this is a northeast problem, but now we can't say that. It's a northwest problem, north central, southeast, southwest, south, south. It's really... We've been overrun by these people, and yes. it's scary. And I was saying earlier that this is such a new university 
2019, somebody made the decision to invest and create this opportunity. And look at what has happened to this investment. Look at the kind of the parents that decided to invest in their children. I checked the school fees of this private university, this um, um, Greenfield. Greenfield. It's about yes. double what you pay in a federal university. Parents made the decision who could afford it to try and do the best they can for their children, only to get this kind of a result. It's devastating. Right. Dr. Bart, a quick comment from you. Well, I think one, uh, we're told that the number is unspecified, but yes. some of the papers have been uh, reporting 40 students. I doubt well, that's the be, population if, of the school. school. Yeah, yeah, population of the school. I doubt what that university will be that will have just 40 students. Is it that they have one department or two departments? Well, it's a relatively new school. But whatever, it's, yeah. it's three years old, yeah. but whatever it, it is, there's no justification for these students Correct. being abducted. The uh, state government has said that they are collaborating with the security agencies to see how they can be, uh, you know, rescued. And I hope that they will succeed this time around because the students of the School of College of Forestry Mechanization uh, who were abducted March 11, 29 of them are still in captivity. 29, correct. You said earlier that about 700 students uh, 730. Were, were abducted. Well, the governor of uh, Benue State, yes. Samuel Autumn, only five days ago, was saying that about 10,000 students are in captivity with uh, Boko Haram. So 730 may be, may be conservative. 10,000 uh, may be uh, frightening. Alarming. But what is clear is that even if it is one student, nobody should be abducted. Now, in the last month or so, 618 schools are about to be shut down in five states of the north, Correct. including Kebi, Yobe, Kaduna, Katsina, now, and Zamfara. Now, 618 schools, look at the effect of that. We also have students who say they don't want to go back to school. We have parents who are saying they don't want their children to go back to school because these schools are not safe. Two days ago, there was a safe school initiative program uh, out there in Abuja where there was a lot of talk about how to make our schools safe. And that is the major challenge, to make our schools safe, to make our society safe, and to make sure that a country that has a population of over 15 million children out of school does not really, you know, uh, continue to embrace illiteracy uh, and ignorance and lack of education simply because the schools are not safe. Well said, Dr. Abati. Well, in another development, a video of Nigerian soldiers celebrating after capturing a Boko Haram stronghold has made the rounds. Let's take a look. <laughs> I mean, I think that this is so encouraging to see. I mean, the specific location of the stronghold is yet to be identified, but we have confirmed that these are Nigerian soldiers, and we have to continue to applaud them. We'll take our final story. A video now making the rounds on social media captures the moment. A man broke a bottle on a police officer's head because the officer allegedly tried to impound his pickup truck. Let's take a look. Hey, the bully, huh? Dr. Abati, what is this country turning into? Nobody deserves to be treated like that, a uniformed official, but... Uh, this is what we see in Nigeria. A few days ago, you brought another video yes. of a gentleman who had uh, violated uh, traffic uh, regulation and uh, who descended on the, uh, on the policeman, who has now been uh, uh, honored for uh, his uh, maturity, the restraints that he exercised. And in How this particular case, uh, what we see there is a policeman uh, trying to enforce the law. And we keep telling people that, yes, citizens may have rights, but they also do not have the rights to take the law into their hands, or to even resist police arrest, or to try to brutalize policemen who ordinarily are doing their job. If you have violated the law or a particular regulation, then you can be sanctioned. This kind of a reckless behavior is like acting like you are above the law. Uh, and in some other jurisdictions in the US, look, that guy could be gone down because it will be a case of uh, you know, assault against a police officer resisting arrest 
constituting a nuisance. This uh, man has to be arrested, I hope, identified I hope, and arrested. I hope that there will be a follow-up. Yes. That it will be Hopefully when identified I get that. and uh, ah, Jesus Christ. It's horrible. What? Tundu, yes. Tundu, a quick, a quick comment from you. I want, I hope no, this, this man is, is not he injured. He has to be arrested. I mean, he has to be tried. Assault is a crime in Nigeria and that car has to be impounded. Correct. I mean, they need to throw the book at him. You cannot assault a police officer. You can't even assault anybody. But no. when we're talking about ordinary Nigerians, like this person in his um, orange shirt, being arrested. I also want to remember Dan Laji Umar, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. We Correct. haven't heard anything Nothing. about him being arrested for assaulting somebody for no apparent reason. It is wrong. Keep your hands to yourself. Rufai, a comment from you. O oh God of creation, direct our noble cause and guide our leaders right. Help our youth the truth to know. You know, the most painful part for me is the man videoing that, the young man videoing that's a running commentary while they are using bottle on the head of a police officer. If those youth know the truth, they will know that it is not acceptable to hurt anybody, let alone a police officer that goes out there and risks his own life every single day Correct. for you to walk free on the streets of Lagos and other parts of this country. If only our truth, our youth know the truth, but what do we see? Most of our young people inundated with alcohol and all sorts mm. of hard drugs. That's why you can hit and hurt a police officer. That is somebody else's him. father, and you are pushing him. I mean, and look the at funny this. thing is the young boys around there cannot go stop him. They were saying that push him enough. off. That's what they were saying, push him off. They kept I mean, on videoing and say push him off. That's yeah, what be our arrested. country yeah. has become. But, oh God of creation, direct our noble cause. Lead our leaders' rights and help our youth the truth to know. Well, well that's a really a, well, a horrible case. Clearly unjustifiable in any sense. I'm pretty bonkers. Whether it's a policeman or anybody else. You know, because the guy could have uh, been fatally injured. Oh, you know the thin score oh, rule yes. in law, don't you? Mm. You can hit somebody's head with that bottle and yes. they're fine. But somebody and it else just gives up. Yes. could die if they have like a, some pre-existing condition yeah. or something that you don't know anything about. That's disgusting. Yes. Mm. Vile. If but the, you see if, that he also maintained calm, just like Officer Arabo. I mean, I'm talking about the police officer. He didn't even, you know, aggravate this man. You well, can see that in that surprise. video. Um, yes. Was caught by surprise. I'm so I mean, look at him. He had his hands to himself. He didn't touch this guy at all. He was just talking. And next thing you see, a bottle on his head. Really horrible. Wow. Really, really horrible. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's all that's I have all for we'll you guys on What's you Trending much, today. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you I will much. see you guys we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. And we have that big party. <laughs> I don't know. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs>